That tastes like God's will. All right, all right, all right. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is a movie that you may not know about, but I'm reviewing Frailty, a pretty good horror thriller film that came out in 2001. It was directed by the late Bill Paxton. It had Matthew McConaughey and Bill Paxton in it, and it introduced a young Matt O'Leary. This film I actually rented out on a whim when video rental stores still existed. I rented it about nine years ago off for Halloween, and this movie has stuck with me ever since. This is actually the first time I've watched it since then, and admittedly some things have changed. Admittedly, this movie does not have the same kind of <gasps> as it does on a first viewing, which most thriller horror movies do, but it still has some pretty good qualities to it, some great performances, and some pretty decent writing. The movie starts with Matthew McConaughey coming into the FBI building, confessing to Powers Booth, an FBI agent, about his father and his family's horrible past with killing people as the God's Hands killer. Now this movie admittedly has some twists and turns in it that kept me guessing throughout the entire film and admittedly rewatching again I actually couldn't remember a few of them so it was cool to see it happen again. But what really drives this movie is the morality compass that this film has. When your father gets a vision from an angel about demons that he's gonna have to kill who turn out to be real people how would you feel if you were a young kid? Especially when your younger brother is more accepting of those ideals and of what his father is doing. We follow Matt O'Leary's character as he's trying to fight with his family as well as the morality of whether this is right or wrong. And that was what the writer of this film had in mind when he was creating this script, the frailty of faith, the frailty of family, the frailty of morality. Those aspects constantly come back into play throughout this movie. And as I said earlier, this film was directed by Bill Paxton, who actually only ever directed two major movies, this one being one and the other one being The Greatest Game, which I really like. I think that's a great movie too. This movie does have some basic qualities to it. The camera work is not exactly the most woo, -woo. it doesn't have a lot of very intricate shots. There's some decent fade editing here and there, but admittedly it does get to be a lot. The editing, I kind of going back and forth on being good and bad. Throughout most of the movie, there's a lot of good pacing in it. There's a lot of good edits back and forth between the past and the present. However, the end, I think it goes back and forth too many times. Instead of trying to give you all this information, boom, 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 at once, all in one trifecta, they're kind of like, <gasps> And admittedly, when I watched it the first time, that's exactly how it felt. It felt like that kind of climb, that mountain climb to the end climax. But this time, it kind of just feels like, okay, oh, okay, oh, 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 okay. So yes, on second viewings, this movie is not as great as I thought it was when I watched it the first time, but it's still a very good movie. And admittedly, if you watch it for the first time, having never seen it before, you will be very surprised. Stephen King and James Cameron both very much like this movie. This was actually Stephen King's favorite horror movie of the year. And it was funny enough, Enough too is you could see a story like this being written by Stephen King. Less kingy dark but more kingy morality I guess you would say. I should also mention this is actually the first movie that convinced me that Matthew McConaughey was a good actor. Up until then I'd only seen him in his was in these surfer movies and whatnot but this movie proved to me that he could act and it was when he returned back to serious acting with the roles like the Lincoln Lawyer and True Detective that I saw the re-emergence of that actor and that class of acting. In the end, I really do enjoy Frailty. I would definitely suggest watching this for Halloween, and I'm going to give Frailty a 6 out of 7. This is one of my favorite horror thriller movies of the early 2000s, and it has stuck with me for the time. Admittedly, like I said, some things have not aged the best, but considering it as a first time viewing, it is an exceptionally good movie. Got good pacing, good build up, and a payoff that somehow works despite the fact that it shouldn't. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Anyways, have a happy Halloween. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural. Or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. Hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs>
To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.